everyone, this is Anna Faleo again, and with me is New York acting master craftsman, Anthony Vincent Bova, and welcome to the fourth episode of Acting, Life, and Everything in Between. Cheers! Cheers! Good morning! Good morning! From Manhattan, New York City. Mm -hmm. For today's topic, there was this one significant time in one of our public workshops in, in Manila um, that one of my students there brought up this very interesting question. Mm. Yeah. His question was, Miss Anna, there are so many workshops in the Philippines alone. There are so many workshops around the world. Which workshops should I choose or which workshops are good for me, for my growth? <sighs> Isn't that valid? Isn't that a valid question? It's because so valid. It's so valid because, you know, when you're not sure where to go with this and you have one actor who might be successful that says, oh, this is the best. And then you have another actor that you might respect or what have you. No, 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 this is the best. And and it's it's difficult just to go on that sometimes. On just um, a, good, a successful actor's recommendation. Well... Yeah, that and also when you see someone that you um, admire, you automatically think, oh, if I'm going to do exactly what they did and I'm going to get that result. Mm. Sometimes it's sometimes it works that way, sometimes it doesn't. Mm. But it's a, it is a very valid question and this business has done a great job in confusing a lot of <laughs> actors with, with that. First, let's talk about there are different methodologies and techniques, mm. okay? I'm not going to, you know, I'm biased. I've been working with the, the methodology we've been doing for over 30 years. And so I'm biased. So I'm not going to carry on too much about like it has to be that technique, right? But here's the thing you want to remember. And this is the first, I just want to say what the trap is. Mm. In the States, there's something called bar hopping. Bar hopping is when you go for a drink in one bar and you hop to another and you hop to another and you hop to another. It's bar hopping, right? You hop, hop, mull around until you're drunk and hopefully you're not driving home. <laughs> a lot of actors go class hopping. Mm. And they go to this class, to that class, because they believe that, and there is a truth to, you know, I could get something from this teacher, that teacher, that teacher. The problem with that, and it's significant, is that the actor usually learns a lot of, they don't learn something substantial. They, they, it's a potpourri. It's kind of this buffet and it doesn't really help in a foundation. Ah, uh, okay, got it. And they learn what I call tricks. They learn a little, little, and it's a trick and you're trying to apply it. I don't think that's good, that's healthy. I don't think that's good for your development. The other trap they fall into is if one system of, or technique, we, we learn a system. A system is comprised of many, many, many techniques. Other approaches are techniques. So, so, I, so if you're learning one methodology and it says, go this way, go, this is my left for your right, perhaps. And then you have to learn another methodology that says, go that way. If you're doing two, what's gonna happen? You're gonna crash into a wall because they're many times they're contradictory. For you know, a basic thing, one works from a being state, another works from a doing state. So what, what so how, how do you, what do you do with that information? Mm -hmm. Be and do, do and be. To invite so much, the differences on that level, especially to actors that are not veteran actors. Mm -hmm and craftsmen already. When you're very, very advanced, it's not as deadly. It's just confusing and it's like, you could kind of make sense of what they're trying to teach and all of that. But when you're just learning, it's, a, it, it's horrible. Mm. I've seen so many actors come out more confused, more dysregulated, mm. more not knowing how to create a reality when they when they say, well, I took that technique and that technique, and I didn't know that. So that's what I find is not productive. Mm -hmm. It's anti-productive. And you know what's the shame of that? 
A lot of people don't know that. And they invest money, they invest time, they invest energy, they invest their sense, there's a commitment, and they're not, and they're really canceling out everything. They're kind not everything, but most of what they're learning. Mm -hmm. Especially when the, um, and that, so that's, that's just a trap that I'm like, oh, please. When you're in your first bunch of years of learning a technique or a system. Stick with it. Stick with it. Yeah. There were actors that came to me. Mm -hmm. And many actors have come to me over the years and they said, I'm not going to mention the technique, but they're like, I'm now, you know, three months into the technique and I'm, I'm not feeling I'm getting. And I'm like, how long is this program? It's a year. And I said to them, talk to me in a year. Mm. I'm not going to get in there now. You got to yeah. just stay with it. I, because right now, I, no. And Anthony, acting yeah. is really, it's different and it's, it's 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 different and it's crucial that you we are careful with us you know um crafts people <laughs> teachers facilitators it's i think speaking for myself <clears throat> it's very delicate it's a very delicate art form because you're dealing with the human behavior you're dealing with just not just the body but the emotions and the psychology So to 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 yank you to yank oneself in and out of different techniques, especially when you're just forming your foundation, is a little delicate and um, must be handled delicately. Yes, I'll say yes to that. There's you opened up like five different avenues I want to go down on that one. <laughs> so that's why I'm stuttering here. I, no, I'm coming yeah. from it's coming from my place, uh, coming from first a reluctant teacher. I was reluctant. I was my mother's assistant facilitator for so long. Mm. Even up to now, when she needs me, I assist her. But, yeah, your mom's a master crafts. Yeah. Craftswoman, yeah. Yeah. And and your whole family is. <laughs> Thank you. We respect the work so much and to the point where we, it's, I don't know if revere is the right word, but we respect it so much, the work, yeah. because it deals with the human behavior. And it, you know, each person is unique. It's not a one size fits all. So um, witnessing that growing up in this kind of work, In the beginning, I was a little reluctant because the responsibility of the facilitator yeah. is huge. It is. You know, that goes to the second part, I find, is you got to go to the facilitators. The facilitator, I can't say, are they a master? Because you got to start out, right? So not everyone's, not every facilitator is going to be a master right off the bat. But are they very steep? Are they steeped in what they're teaching? And... Do they really know their stuff? That's one point. Second thing is, do they resonate with you? When Anna was talking just now, what was going through my mind is some people like what I call the boot camp style, where the teacher is 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 just boom, you know, like that, because that's for some reason that res that resonates. With yeah, them. it resonates with them. Other people like to be a bit more. Hand holding, a little more hand holding, all that. You've got to see: does is the teacher very knowledgeable, if not a master craftsman, a woman in their work? One, number two. Do you trust them? Do you do you respect them? Do does the teacher's style resonate? Three, does the what they're teaching? Now I'm talking about the person now, but what is what they're teaching resonate with you? Mm -hmm. Now, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. I'll tell you why. A lot of my actors over the years, they like me and everything else, but I'd have them work and go in an area and they'd be, this doesn't resonate with me. This doesn't, well, of course it didn't because I was pushing a button that, they, that needed to be pushed. Mm -hmm. I was going in a place that was undeveloped mm -hmm. with them. I was going in a place that, they, so when you say if does it resonate, you got to, is it because something was pushed and it's something you need to confront and deal with? Or 
Are they simply speaking from a methodology that makes no sense? Let me give you an example of when something did not resonate for me. It was in college. It was before it was, I didn't know anything yet. And I, you know, it was, in, it was my major. And I would listen to terms like what's your objective and super objective and your uh, action and your, your verb. And there was all of this. And I'm like, and I said to myself, I, for me, not knocking other people who worked for me, but for me, I was looking at that and I'm like, that makes no sense to me. And I tried it, studying the books, I'd read in the book, I'd do all the work. It still made no sense to me because there was something real basic for me that was missing. It was telling me what to do, but it wasn't telling me how to create reality. It was just telling me, it, it, like, I had no clue on how to create a reality. I had no, no understanding and I tried and tried and tried. Um, and then many years passed. I went through a whole career of musical theater, almost a whole career, and performing and acting, knowing nothing about how to create a reality. Mm. You know, in musical theater, you can you, you can, can get some distance. You can wing it. Yeah. You can get some distance. I'll leave it at that because mm -hmm. it's a, it's a different. Oh, and depending on the show, also. And I was I was going on kind of tricks and mm. this and that and. That didn't work for me, and mm -hmm. it was annoying. Finally, um, the work we do is it's the Eric Morris system, right? And you know, Eric Morris he's written ten books. He has written more than three times the books of any acting teacher, dead or alive. Why? Because, and I'm not here to say you know it's this, it's this, it's this, mm -hmm. but I'm just I'm just giving you a background because there are many many holes in contemporary teaching. Mm. There's a lot of holes in what is being taught today. The, what is preparation and how do you really prepare? How, what is um, emotional management? Mm. How do you take care? How do you, it, it goes, it, what I call ocean wide, ocean deep. And in, when I started that work, like it really, struck me in a deep place because I said to myself, oh my God, this isn't acting. And Eric said to me, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how many sessions before you realized that. It was moment one, day one, I walked in as an auditor, right, into his, into his class. It was at the time, it was on 42nd Street, Theater Row, West Side. I came in as a guest and I, this is great. I came as well. And I'm mind you, I was primarily a dancer back then. And I said, well, I have to get into my sweatpants and stretch. You know? <laughs> Cute. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Got into my sweatpants. Did a, I was in a split, you know, my elbows down like that, you know, mm. stretching. And do, like, I'm ready for this acting class. And then I saw what he was doing. And I went, <clears throat> holy tamolia, this is... And my jaw went from here to here. Like, I was just like watching the whole day and at the end he he got me at the end i was auditing i was just an auditor just an auditor so i thought i was you know I, clear i was clear yeah. <laughs> you, you weren't gonna work you you weren't gonna be put on the spot no and then he said uh so anthony you want to get up and work i'm like you know, <laughs> Like, you know when a dog passes gas and they're running after their tail? Yeah, like, yeah. That was me at that point. Like, uh, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm like, sure, sure, right? <laughs> you, you see the panic? <laughs> Pure panic. So I, I worked. And uh, he had me do a rage workout. And <sighs> that night, I went to sleep. For a pro I went to sleep at around eight o'clock and woke up 10 o'clock the next morning because so much that I was in for a lifetime that I was holding in just came out. And when I woke up, I said, I don't know what happened. I don't know why it, I don't know anything, but I know I need it. That's all I knew. And the other thing that hit me was I really now understand what no acting really does mean. Mm. 
everyone says, don't act, don't act. So you know what people do? They act natural. Yeah. But they're still acting. <laughs> but they're acting natural. Then at that point, I became, now mind you, back in that day, when I was with Eric, he came to New York every two weeks for three full days. Oh. So at the time, I was in approximately 60 hours of training a week because it was wow. every uh, two weeks for three days. And the three days were no eight hour days. Oh. They were like 10 hour days. Wow. Yeah. He just kept going and going and going. So that's where the bulk of my real, that's where my foundation came from, was from that. But going back. <laughs> but going back to oh, the topic. I, I, I went off again, didn't? But I? it's a good off again. Yeah, that uh, was an interesting, little entertaining anecdote of yeah. your first six, your first day. Okay. So you're saying that first, uh, the teacher, the facilitator, must be knowledgeable, must have some kind of mastery of the methodology or the system that he or she is teaching. So. A lot of research on the teacher the actual not just the school but the teacher mm -hmm. and then the second one you're saying that the, you must trust the teacher you're on a journey i mean if you're in any kind of acting class that is substantive you've got to surrender a bit you know you can't come in there mm. like this it's like going on a date all right if you're going on a date and you're like hi how are you i'm fine i'm good you're good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to happen. Right? Yeah. At the same time, you just, you have in your head, you know, there are boundaries and everything else and those are respected, but you've got to, if you don't give into any acting class, whatever it is, you can't expect it to work for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of actors do. They don't commit and then make a judgment on. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. The actor must have a place to fail. The actor does not have a place to fail. They, the actor will never grow. Whose responsibility is that? The teacher. It's yeah. It's the teacher and also setting up an environment in the classroom. Uh -huh. That's one thing I, I, you know, I'm. I don't want to do this to myself, but one of the priorities that I'm pretty good at it is that when I'm teaching, I'm like, no, 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 no. This is a safe place. Mm. People are gonna fall on their face. Mm. This is a place for them to fall on their face. And once you really create that as a facilitator, you'll see how much support everyone gives you. You know, yeah, that's true. The workshop really is between you and your work. Mm. You're not competing with anyone you're supporting. And you know, like I know, when that happens, that their self-worth and their self-esteem is going up. Yeah. Because it's not about pulling each other down or comparing, but supporting each other because they're getting full, mm. fulfilled and full. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good. The best work there is when, in, um, you know, everyone I'm sure will agree, it's when you don't need anyone's approval because you just feel good about yourself, regardless if you succeeded in getting the job or not or whatever. Mm. It was like, I'm proud of myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's one more thing that's critical. I don't know if there's one more, but there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. There's a lot. But this here's a big thing. You ready? Mm. And that is so many actors, so many actors expect you to be the magician because you're the master craftsman, craftswoman mm. to fix them mm. or to make them great, make them good. Mm. Not gonna happen. Actor's not hungry. It's not. It's not on the teacher. Actor has to be very hungry. That needs to be heard also by managers. Mm. It's crucial that this is also realized. If the actor isn't hungry, really hungry, really hungry, then nothing kind of works for them. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't, you know. There's no leverage. And then people who are rallying around this actor that is not hungry, then say, well, I guess these workshops aren't good. Or whatever it was, not just ours, any workshops. Mm. It's, it's not about 
our work at, at all in this no. thing. It's about the actor. That's why even that actor that came to me in three months in another technique, I said to him, come back in a year because you're not committing. You, <laughs> ah, if you're boom. not If you're not going to commit to learn something there that you've... I said, does it make sense to you? And some of it, well, okay, well, stick, try to work, try, put yourself out on the line. Mm. Learn something. Mm. Learn something. You don't even know what you don't know yet, you know, and then come back with, with some knowledge base. And, but now, can I segue? Sure. I want to segue to, and this is um, 30 minutes in, this might be part two. Okay. Listen and watch the second part of this episode next week on acting, life, and everything in between. Mm -hmm.